and we thank you for joining us. Our joint service has evolved into a celebration that we can and should come together to worship as a sign of our unity. Our styles are different, our histories can be complicated, but both our churches trace our roots back to the old Church of Christ in Yale. At our worship a year ago, we were gathered in the Afro-American Afro Cultural Center where Reverend Benita Grubbs from the Christian Community Action preached and we had a great joint service. And this year we would have been together in Battelle Chapel, but the pandemic intervened. And so we're meeting together on Zoom. But we're thrilled to be together again with BK and to welcome all of you, students, staff, faculty, and friends of both churches. The worship experience Jenny and Orlando and I put together will include various worship elements from each church's worship pattern, all adapted somewhat for Zoom. We'll have welcoming praise music from Dr. Rochelle Yarborough, a time of shared greeting and welcome, a prayer of confession, two scripture readings by students, our message from Reverend Yarborough, a special anthem by the UCY Choir and the Yale Gospel Choir, prayers led by Pastor Jenny, and announcements and closing circle. Zoom worship can be a little awkward, but we invite you to let the Holy Spirit work through the technology and work in our hearts to bridge the distance that separates us. The physical distance during the pandemic and the historic distance between American churches, sometimes divided by race. If it's, if it's comfortable, leave your camera on so we can see each other, sing along with energy on mute, uh, and comment in the chat on moments that speak to you or to encourage our leaders. And now I invite you to join me in prayer as we invite God's presence and grace into our time of worship. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, bless our gathering from our two church communities today. Yes, it feels a little weird, but we know there are no obstacles that you cannot overcome. Open our eyes and our hearts to see, what, that, see that you have been with us every step of this last week that your grace has embraced us, your spirit infused us, and your never-ending love surrounding us. Even in tough times, even when we disappoint ourselves, you are there reminding us that we are your beloved children. Bless our worship. Help us stretch to include each other. Give us hearts this morning to praise you, to thank you, to turn back to you, to love you, and to serve you. Thank you for bringing us together today. In Jesus' name, amen. And now Dr. Rochelle Yarbrough will lead us in song. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And greetings again from the VK side of things. We're so um, glad to be with you all this morning and to have this opportunity to share in worship. And I was reading this morning in uh, out of 1 John chapter 4. And just thinking about some of the things that Pastor Ian, you know, mentioned in terms of history and, and how churches... Uh, little C sometimes interact within the big C church. And um, so I'd just like to share a couple of passages that I read this morning before we sing together uh, and raise our voices in song to our God. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 18 through 21, it reads, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. And I was encouraged by that scripture as I think about the legacy of Dr. King and his uh, invitation and encouragement to all of us to be united and so much of what's happening in our world today feels very big and feels very um, divided, the opposite of that. But I was also encouraged by the verse in 1 John chapter 3. Sorry, is that where we were? Oh, Dr. Rochelle, you got muted. If you could just unmute. We somehow lot we heard it's good from first John three. Nope. Okay, so that was the Holy Spirit because it's actually earlier in first John four. <laughs> and it is uh, verse four, which says you are of God little children and have overcome them 
because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And so as we sing this morning and as we join our voices in songs of praise and of worship to our God, we're just going to sing of his greatness and sing of his character because that is what around what we should be united and our faith is in him and his ability as the one who is greater to bring us together in love. Amen.
majesty and all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wrapped himself with light and darkness tries to hide but it trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God, how great, how great is our God, sing with me, how great. Thank you, Dr. Shell. <laughs> and now we have a, um, a time in our service when we greet each other. Both churches have traditions of greeting each other in worship. Uh, and our, at UCY, uh, we have a time we call passing of the peace when people turn in their pews and greet one another. Uh, at BK, it's called the love assault. And it's a little more involved. <laughs> Reverend, Reverend Orlando, don't say yes. a word. Uh, our love assault, uh, we, we know that people in the world assault each other with various things that are unkind. And so our love assault is uh, for BK, the opportunity to uh, just spread the love. So we get up, we hug, we shake hands, we talk, we chat. Um, usually you have to bring people in and say, come on, let's go back to your seat now. Uh, but that's what our love assault is, just a time to spread God's love and joy and greet one another. We'll try and capture that spirit today that we're on Zoom. Uh, I'm going to pull up the whiteboard on Zoom, and I'm going to invite you to write a brief message of welcome and praise to everyone else on this special Sunday. If you haven't used the whiteboard before, you'll see a black bar at the top of the screen, and you can click on text to type a message or draw to handwrite a message, or feel free to write a message in the chat. Let's see if I can do this. I'm not technologically savvy. Here we go. So do you see the black bar there? Oh, you're getting my script. There we go. There we go. So write a message. Welcome everyone. And if I can just jump in really quick, if, oh, you, can't, if you can't find the black bar, go to the top next to the green bar and under view options, you can click annotate. There we go. You can change your color. You can do all kinds of different things. I love the hearts. Or you can put a message in the chat too, if you like. And don't be afraid if things are on top of each other. That's the way it is in real life too.
I love the circle of love here. I love the messages of peace. It's not quite the same as getting donuts and juice and wandering around and hugging everybody, but uh, this is our this is our virtual version. We'll wait just a minute for a few more messages. I see artwork appearing. Great, thank you all. As I said, it's not quite the same as, as it would be if we were in person, but I appreciate your love uh, expressed today. So I'm gonna stop sharing and we'll head into our time of confession. Uh, at UCY, we're two weeks into the Christian season of Lent, uh, 40 days of preparation for Holy Week and Easter. And for us, Lent is a season of self-examination and prayer and fasting. So during Lent, we devote special time in worship each week to examining our consciences and confessing our sins to God and each other. Today, I'll offer an invitation and we'll pray a prayer together that you'll see in, your, in the chat. And then we'll have a time of silence for individual prayer Then our wonderful baritone soloist, Ben Faraby, will lead us in the traditional Greek prayer uh, of confession, Kyrie eleison, and then I'll offer an assurance of forgiveness. So now I invite you into a time of prayer. I invite you to find that quiet center and open your hearts to God, who longs to have us share our lives and loves to offer us forgiveness. So if you'll join me muted uh, as we'll say this prayer together. Holy God, we confess our sins today before you and before the neighbors you've given us. Have mercy on us and forgive us for all our frustration as the pandemic drags on, for our unreal and unfair expectations of ourselves, for unjust, unkind and proud words and actions, for neglect of prayer, of study, of charity. Bless our two churches as we celebrate together. We confess that we would prefer not to see the ways we divide Christ and the church. We confess that facing racism is painful. We confess that change is hard. Show us your way, your good news, your kingdom, with the power and presence of Christ. Amen. Now I invite you to take a moment of silence and pray your own prayer of confession. And now I'll invite Ben to lead us in an ancient prayer of the church sung in the original language of the New Testament in ancient Greek. The words are Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Thank you, Ben. Hear these words of assurance. 
Rejoice that in the eyes of God, through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven all our sins, even the sins we cannot forgive ourselves for. Leave the past, close the door, turn with hope to the future, let Christ turn all our lives around. I declare in the name of Christ that we are together a forgiven people. Amen. And now we'll hear our scripture readings for the day. Hello, everyone. My name is Marvin. I'm a, a current sophomore at Yale, and I'm one of the student coordinators of BCAT. Today, I will be reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has risen upon you. For darkness shall, over, shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah. I am a junior at Yale College, one of the student deacons at UCY, as well as a member of the choir. And today I will be reading from the book of Acts, chapter 27, verses 18 to 20. We were being pounded by the storm so violently that on the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard, and on, their th on the third day with their own hands they threw the ship's tackle overboard. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest raged, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Marvin, and thank you, Sarah. Family, it's good to be with you. God bless you this morning. And because we were exceedingly tempest-tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. On the third day, we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our own hands. Now, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. Family, for the brief moments that we shared together this morning, I want to speak from the theme, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much. We thank you for this opportunity to be here. We thank you so much for being a living God among your people. God, please in this moment, do all that you purpose to do. Help us leave this place knowing you more and also looking more like you. God, there's nothing good that I can say, but you hold the words of life. So I pray that you would speak and we would hear you, that we would see you, and that the people would see and hear none of me. God, do all that you purpose to do. Anoint your people to hear. Anoint me to preach the word of God. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My assignment today is to charge you to give people and ourselves reason to hope. Reason to hope in God. Prophecies of a Savior being born, Jesus actually coming to earth in the flesh, his life, burial, resurrection, Jesus' ascension. Jesus raised not only the level of expectation of life with God, what it is like to be with God, Jesus raised the level of desire to be with God. More people hoped to be with God, and then they took steps towards that end. In the case of the man Jesus, uh, Matthew records in his gospel in chapter 4, beginning at verse 23, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. 
Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. This was an IQ test, folks, and the people passed. When there is a good thing, people want more of it. Good things, miraculous things happened when Jesus was around and some people wanted more of it. More time in the presence of Jesus, more of what Jesus offered. The disciples, students of Jesus' actions and way and thinking, wanted to be with Jesus seemingly most of all. They left all and followed him. Jesus showed them such a better way of life that when Jesus confided in them that he must suffer things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and scribes, and be killed and raised on the third day, the disciples would have none of it. Peter made his desire known. Like a good friend with a serious concern, Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Matthew 16, 22. At another time, Jesus is speaking, saying, Where I am going, you cannot come. Peter has something to express here, too. Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, where are you going? John records in chapter 13, verses 36 through 37, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus raised in people the desire to be with him. Perhaps Jesus has raised your desire to be with him. Despite Peter's protest, Jesus ascended. Jesus promised that where he is, the people of God would be also, that Jesus would return to get us. And so I and many others are waiting for the return of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to be with him where he is, to have and live a better life. Towards this end, the author of the book of Hebrews encourages us in chapter 10, beginning at verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. And so today we wait, actively walking by faith. Hope clarifies the destination. Faith gives us the means or the ability to make the journey to it. Faith is a pretty popular topic in many circles. Said in one way or another, you might hear the words, keep the faith, in Christianity, and where the, in the circles where I congregate, I think we talk a lot about faith. In fact, I preached on faith last Sunday. But there is a prerequisite to faith, and that is hope. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hope is important. Where I want to encourage you today is in hope. Hope identifies the mountaintop we want to reach. Hope is what makes our faith productive because hope provides direction for our efforts. Hope is the vision. It is the end in mind. I hope for an academic degree and I have faith that if I work hard and work long and work smart towards that end, then I will receive the degree. Hope clarifies the destination. Hope specifies the destination. There is a hope that points towards someday. 
Our opening text, the prophet Isaiah in chapter 60, reminds me of the good news, the prophecy of Israel, of the Messiah, of the whole world. There is also a hope that points to today. It petitions for a change right away, not someday, but today. Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, some things can wait, but not everything can wait. Sure, we will wait if we have to, but there comes a time when waiting doesn't work. Waiting doesn't work out. It just buries us further and further into trouble. Our New Testament opening text is the testimony of Luke. Luke in this setting is a companion to the Apostle Paul. Paul at present is a prisoner in transit to Rome. Rather than be tried in Jerusalem by his own people who laid accusations against him, Paul uses his Roman citizenship to appeal to Caesar for judgment. Paul and some other prisoners were placed under the authority of the centurion Julius and are now in their voyage to Rome. Luke also is on the voyage, along with a couple hundred others. Groups of people are traveling together, yet have varied purposes, intents, and understandings about their trip. Paul understands that he is called and chosen to preach the gospel in Rome. Luke is aware of the calling on Paul's life and in their ministry. Even though Paul is in an uncomfortable setting as a prisoner, he goes willingly, perhaps eagerly, because Paul knows purpose waits at the other end of his journey. Have you ever set out in an uncomfortable space because you believe God's will for you was on the other side of the journey? You understood the passage you would travel wouldn't be ideal, but reaching the destination was worth the discomfort and inconvenience of the trip. If you know that's true, say amen. So you embark upon the journey without much kicking and screaming because though it will be a tough pursuit, you believe what you hope for will be worth it all. Paul and Luke and the others are underway their journey. It did not take long for things to start to go downhill fast. It reminds me of January and February 2020. We entered the year with plans and hopes and intentions and actions. And it did not take long for the plans to unravel and the trouble to show up on our scene. Luke, Paul, and the others are a couple of stops into their trip when bad weather diverts these travelers from the typical sailing route. Thinking there is no place to go but forward, the navigators of this trip ignore Paul's warning. Paul perceives that the trip will end in disaster, losing the cargo, losing the ship, and losing their lives. This must have been difficult for Paul. Because on one hand, Paul knew he was destined and called to spend time in Rome. Yet Paul noticed that the storms they just endured and the climate right now upon them collectively spell disaster if they move any further. It is true that in life, it can appear to be no good answer. And, no one, and one has to find and or make a way forward or not. We enter the text in Acts chapter 27, verse 18. It had been rough and then some relief. Sailing looks good for a while. Then trouble hits worse than before. The travelers secure what they can, but are driven and tossed by the tempest. Luke recalls in the 18th verse, and because we were exceedingly tempest tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. In this storm, the sailors judged that traveling lighter would allow them to fare better, and they proceed to lighten the ship. By the next day, the third day, desperation set in. Luke recounts 
with their own hands, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. One commentator speaks, throwing cargo overboard would eliminate immediate profits. Throwing this gear, the ship's tackle overboard, would eliminate the longevity of the ship's business. The travelers throw in the towel. In the last nearly 12 months, family businesses shut their doors. It is one thing to close for a little while during the pandemic to wait it out. It's another thing to have to close down for good. Companies sold off what they had. People left careers. Organizations let go of people. People left, sold off homes. Athletic careers and Olympic prospects were laid down. Loved ones were laid to rest. Today in our life, there have been many days of trouble and many things people left and are leaving behind just to make it to another day. On Luke's voyage to Rome, there have been many days of trouble. Luke says in the 20th verse, Now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. First, the people were looking to save themselves, and so they did what they could in their own intellect, with their own strength, using their own means to right the situation. Then they stopped eating. I think because they had given up hope that there was anything more that they personally could do. So now the people hoped salvation would come from elsewhere, not from their own ability. Things got so bad, the people looked outside of themselves, hoping to be saved. And when salvation didn't come, all hope for salvation was relinquished. Hope specifies that better days are coming, and faith is the strength to eat, to get more strength, to work towards that new day. When hope is gone, faith has no direction, it has no traction, and the strength to go on is not needed. There can come a point where hope is no longer with us. Uh, you know, I, we don't like to talk about this much, but when it has to be uh, when it has been too bad for too long, the reality is sometimes hope is set aside. There are conditions of life that can press you, challenging you to question what is possible. You no longer look forward to the way things will be. The way things are have taken their toll. Then God speaks. God speaks to Paul. In Acts 27, in the 21st verse, it reads, But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. When the situation is quite dire, Paul stands up and said, I told you so. And as many of us know, and as I think Paul probably knew, saying I told you so doesn't provide a solution for present circumstances. But Paul actually does have a word from the Lord. In Acts 27, 22, And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God. God, the reason that Paul can believe God is because Paul has been in the midnight hour before and God has spoken to Paul before. So when God speaks to Paul this time, Paul recognizes his voice and he says, therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. God's message in Paul's words was a declaration uh, in counter to what the travelers had concluded. 
By this point in their journey, the travelers thought for sure they would die. They gave up all hope of being saved. Then God spoke to Paul and Paul spoke to the people. Something shifted in the people. Scripture says that at midnight on the 14th night, after having been driven up and down in the sea, the sailors sensed that they were drawing near some land. The sailors set in motion trying to measure the distance to land, land that recently everyone had given up hope that they would ever see and be safe. Paul knew what was about to happen and recognizing the people still hadn't eaten, Paul spoke up again in the 33rd verse. And as the day was about to dawn, Paul implored them to take food saying, today is the 14th day. You have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment, for this is your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread, and he gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and also took food for themselves. And in all were 276 persons on the ship. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and threw out the wheat into the sea. Paul spoke a word of hope. Paul invited them into it and then modeled before the people his living hope and faith. From Paul's words, Paul's instructions, and Paul's actions, the people were encouraged. They took food, eating until they had eaten enough. Family, the vaccines against COVID-19 are here and have been deployed. The end of the pandemic is in sight for those of us who before could not see. My hope never wavered for seeing this day, for I am a scientist and I have historical knowledge and present day confidence in what God can do through scientists, health and community professionals. Yet I find myself still burdened today. While the COVID-19 pandemic as we know it and have experienced it is on its way out within the next year or two, there remains diseases of the soul, sin that plagues our world in these United States, hatred, pride, greed, selfishness, selfish ambition are pervasive. Racism abounds. Poverty is widespread. Wars are happening. I argue that all over the world there is trouble today. We are in trouble in at least one area, if not more. There are economic crises, natural disasters, ethnic divisions and cultural strife, religious unrest, hunger. But there is also light within you, ready to go forth and ready to right size present day circumstances. I am passionate about changing my world. This past week, I took an assessment of personal leadership values and personal motivations necessary for changing our world. The values are hope, listening, forgiveness, integrity, valuing every person and multiplication. Hope, listening, forgiveness, integrity, valuing every person and multiplication. The results came back. My most developed value was listening. My least developed value was hope. Now don't look at me like that. What's your hope level like? All right, don't, don't look at me like that. <laughs> now on a scale from, uh, it was like either a 40 point scale or a 50 point scale. Listening for me was 40 points and hope 28 points. After some initial digging, I realized that my hope in Jesus and God is stronger than ever. My hope in eternal life is rock solid. My hope in the future and things to come is intact. But my hope in today, that things will be better today for my daughter, who is six, that I and my godsons are safe, that society values my wife, that hope has taken a beating. The storms of life 
are still raging. I imagine that I am not alone in personal hope taking a beating in any topic, in any life area important to you. Yet I have this confidence for any dark place anywhere in the world that God has light, that God has a word for that darkness. I believe scripture, Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light. It gives light. It gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. So my request for you today is easy to request, but it's more challenging for us to do. Let's keep hope alive. From Paul's example, I implore you in three things. We need your message. We need your message. But please say only what God tells you. We need your leadership and invitation. But please, not in pretense. We need your action. But please follow through. I believe just like God spoke to Paul, that God speaks to many of you, that you hear his voice, that there are things that he has told you when you are having good days, he speaks to you. When you are having bad days, he speaks to you. He has given you a word and I want you to know that that word is not just for you. But that word has the potential to keep hope alive in people who are throwing in the towel. And so I encourage you to get in your closet, to take your walks in nature, to listen to your music, to sing your songs, to put yourself in the posture of being able to hear to, from God when all others are unable to hear and to receive what God tells you. Then I encourage you to speak it aloud and to provide declaration and to provide leadership and instruction. Don't just keep it to yourself. Say it and mean it. And then when you mean it, do what Paul did, actually do it. Paul told them arise and eat, but he didn't stop there. The Bible says that he took food and he blessed it in front of people who didn't believe in his God and he ate in front of them. And when they saw him eat and when they reflected on his words of encouragement, they were encouraged and they followed suit. Do it and do it all the way. And I think that God's light is going to continue to dawn on our darkness. May we, may our world have divine hope onto which one can attach faith to travel the distance for God's kingdom to come and his will to be done as it is in heaven. Let's continue to look towards one day being in heaven and let's continue to work to bring heaven to earth. Will you please join me? Let's please keep hope alive. Bless you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Megan, and I am the music director at UCY. This past October, our choir had the joy of collaborating with the Yale Gospel Choir to virtually perform Better Is One Day. It is my true pleasure to share it with you today as we keep hope alive for better days in God's house. <laughs> Better is one day in your house. 
Amen. Thank you, Pastor Orlando, for that um, good message. You have given us much to think about and reflect on and take with us this week. We give thanks also for the gift of music, the way that it transports us and helps us to hear God and the Spirit in new ways. So thank you to the UCY Choir and the Yale Gospel Choir for creating that beautiful um, piece of work for us this morning. We're now going to move into our time of prayer as a community. We will begin um, by giving you each an opportunity as you feel led to share the prayers of joy and concern, your praise reports and your prayer requests with this body so that we might bring them together to God as one people and that we might also remember the prayers on one another's hearts and take them with us and continue to pray for one another in the week ahead. So um, as we begin soon, there'll be an opportunity, if you feel led, to unmute and to speak your prayer aloud. Um, if we were all crammed into Battelle or the house, surely some of us would start talking at the same time. That's okay. <laughs> it, that's what happens in person too. So if that happens, don't worry. And you know, one person will pull back and we'll pray, and then the other can join in. Um, after each prayer, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and you're invited to respond, hear our prayer, muted or unmuted, however you feel comfortable. Again, that's Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, you're also welcome to put your prayer in the chat. Um, and there'll be many prayers that we're thinking of that we won't say aloud, but we, know, we trust that God hears us when we pray. Um, and then after that time of sharing all of our prayers, I will um, conclude with a brief prayer as well. Sound good? All right, let us come together and bring to God and this beautiful community our prayers. Let us pray. Loving God, we are grateful to be together in this space. We are grateful for Zoom and the power of the internet so that we might be together while also being safe. Together, I invite this community to share the prayers that are on your hearts. Prayer of Thanksgiving that I have a COVID vaccine appointment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for my son, Michael, his eye condition. Um, it looks like we may be turning a corner and we've been able to reduce his treatment without um, exacerbation for which we're all very grateful. We give great thanks, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers that in a time when a lot of us are struggling to hold on to hope that we can also be present and encouraging to others and help them find hope too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayer that God would restore my hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I include it in chat, but just continue prayers for my cat, Shadow, who's continuing to go through health issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for the strengthening of our faith uh, during this difficult season and, and also prayers for uh, hope in a much better, brighter future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers.
prayers for those that don't have a home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gratitude for this beautiful community this morning and gratefulness for the love that I feel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also lift up all the prayers in the chat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your wisdom, O oh God, surpasses our vision and our understanding. You see past what we see, you know the way forward, past what we can see. Hear these prayers that we have raised this morning, some we've raised together, others that we will share now in silence. O oh God, we know that you hold the whole world in your holy hands, yet we long for control, direction, and clarity. Help us when our bodies and minds seem to fail us. Bring your peace. Replenish those who are journeying with cancer, unexpected injuries, chronic illnesses, depression, anxiety, and ailments seen and unseen by others. Help us when we struggle to discern the way forward. Help us when we don't know where we are going or how to get there. Guide us, helping us to know that we are being called to eat and to be nourished, that we deserve to be well fed. And help us also to know what we are being called to let go of and to throw overboard to lighten the load. Show us the way forward, your way forward, O oh God and remind us that we are not alone and that you will reside in every path. Help us when we feel overwhelmed by all that is on our plates. Interrupt our anxieties, reminding us that you love us for who we are, not what we do or accomplish. Help our nation and the nations of the world. Help those who govern to set aside greed and self-interest so that they might lead with goodwill, wisdom, and the interest of all at heart. Help the New Haven community, O oh God, particularly those who feel unsafe and those who are grieving. Help the church that in its great diversity and in the specificity of our two churches gathered here today, that we might continue to follow you, discerning how you call us to move as your people in the world. We are grateful, O oh God, for all that we have to celebrate and be joyful about. Yet gratitude, if we let it, can feel fleeting, so help us to dwell in a posture of thankfulness for the new life, grace, and hope you supply and you desire for us. Invigorate our hearts and our hands that we might seek you in all things and seek your justice and goodness and healing and mercy for all of humanity and the world. Help us to be your people, your students, keeping hope alive. As Pastor Orlando reminded us and as you reminded him as he prepared to preach, it might not always be easy but help us, O oh God, to claim your hope, to be nourished by it, and to share it in thought and action. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Ooh, amen. Thank you, everyone. It has been such a joy to be together. We now turn to a time where Pastor Orlando and I have a couple of announcements. Um, we'll share about our offering for this Sunday. And then Dr. Rochelle will sing us out, will be sent forth with a benediction, 
and um, a beautiful organ piece by our director of chapel music here at UCY, Dr. Nat Gums. Um, but a couple of announcements to get started. Um, first, we will have a community gathering right after this. It's always a little startling when church ends that you, you can hop off Zoom as um, the postlude is happening, or you're welcome to stick around and say hello. And um, students and adults uh, will stick around and will react to the service together and greet one another. And there will be an opportunity for those that want to stick around to have breakout rooms and meet people. But you can also stick around and hop off before the breakout rooms. However you feel comfortable, you're invited to stay. Um, at UCY for our offering, uh, we can't be together, obviously. So every week we have been uh, recommending that people give as they're able to local organizations. Um, BK is a wonderful place to be able to share and support their ministry. So as you're able, we recommend that you support um, BK this week. Uh, we also would like to recommend to your um, giving and generosity this week, the San Antonio Food Bank. Um, many of us know people in Texas who have been hit hard by what happened. And uh, we're always reminder, reminded that the disaster happens and then there's the aftermath and the ongoing aftermath and effect. Um, so as you're able, we encourage you to give as you can. Um, also two brief announcements. Um, next week at UCY, Reverend Torianto Johnson, our intern from last year, he graduated from the Div School last year, is coming back. He's gonna be preaching and it's we can't wait to have him back. So uh, we'd love to see you and um, to welcome him back. And then also um, we will have our UCY Lenten retreat, which is for students and adults, March 13th. I will be on Zoom this year. We won't get away to Mercy by the Sea, um, but it should be a restoring time. Our theme for this year is made in the image of God. Um, and you can sign up in what Phoebe posted in the chat. Uh, Pastor Orlando. Yes, uh, family, it is just great to be with you, uh, UCY. Um, so thankful for our time together this morning. BK family, I see you out there. Hello, hey. Uh, great, to, great to be with you. Um, uh, for BK, we invite you to visit us anytime. Right now, our services start on Sundays at 11. Uh, so an hour after the services start here uh, at UCY. Um, our email address is bcay.org, bcay.org. Um, our website is that, uh, and it's just great uh, to be with you today. So bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Dr. Rochelle, if you would take it away. It is a BK tradition to always close with We've Come This Far by Faith, and it's something just singing with you when we do this joint service together. And again, the words, I think, will appear in the chat, so feel free to sing along. <laughs> And now this closing Micah benediction that UCY says at the end of every worship service, we invite you to unmute as you are able and join 
in the parts that say all, Phoebe will post it in the chat. With what shall I come before the Lord? And God has told you, O mortal, what is good? And what, and what does, does, does the Lord, Lord require of you? you? But to do justice, to do to justice, do justice, and to love kindness, to love kindness, kindness, kindness. walk humbly with your God. Walk humbly, walk humbly, walk humbly with, with our God. God. Mm. Amen. Come this far. God, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. Please go before your people and please help us to walk in the steps that you've ordered for us. Keep us as only you know how. Do through us and for us all that you purpose to do. God, we thank you for all things. We thank you for the light that is within us, that no matter how dark the darkness is, it cannot comprehend the light. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, go before your people. Until we meet again, amen. amen.